Great. So um, thanks for hosting um, the Hustings, uh, Martin. Um, so uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Emma Wallace. I've lived in Harrow for um, just over 10 years. I work as a qualified librarian, um, and that has been for 16 years now. I've worked in um, a variety of different sectors, legal, further education colleges, um, public library, and for the last nine years, I've worked as a school librarian at a number of London secondary schools. Um, I've got a keen interest in politics and I always endeavour to stay up to date in local and national issues um, from the environment, education, transport, health, housing and policing. I think it's really important that everyone gets involved in politics as we, sh uh, we all need to be directing how our communities work and how society should be for us to live in. Um, I joined the Green Party in 2014 and I started out actually volunteering um, with Martin and Shara Ali in Brent. I uh, don't know if you remember that, Martin. And um, that led to me standing as a parliamentary candidate twice in the Harrods constituency. So that was in 2015 and 2017, as well as um, count, I was uh, st stood in the council elections in 2018. Um, I've been Harrow Green Party coordinator since 2015. And over that time, I've been closely involved in green politics. I've been um, active in the party. So I've attended national conferences. I've been to London Green Party meetings and also most recently, I've been um, attending some of their online training around social media, um, applying the vote to win model, um, also the role that women can play in politics. So in Harrow, I've been an activist in the local area for the 10 years I've lived here. So I've been involved in a number of campaigns. Um, these have been ones involving standing up for public services as they have been uh, cut due to local council budget um, cuts from the austerity measures in the last 10 years. So I've been against the closure of a number of Harrow public libraries, um, a campaign, campaign that uh, was particularly close to my heart um, against closure of mental health units such as the Bridge Cafe in Harrow and also against a number uh, closure of a number of walk-in NH clinic NHS clinics in Harrow um, I've also um, yeah, just checking can you hear me is it going okay yeah you're, okay. you're breaking up a bit but don't worry yeah we can make sense of it so far yeah Okay, it makes sense. Okay. Um, also, um, I've been highlighting campaigns um, against the constant threat of development on green spaces in Harrow. So there was Harrow Schools proposed development on metropolitan open land. Also, there's a current application to redevelop um, land on the Ridgeway, which would be a massive block of flats, which would overshadow West Hout Harrow Park and some allotments. And most recently, I've been campaigning against HS2 and I've been supporting Hillingdon Green Party in this um, there, and against the destruction of quite a large part of the Colne Valley. Um, I've also been supporting local Harrow Extinction Rebellion Group and participated in a number of their actions. And I attended the Harrow's um, Black Lives Matter protests in June. Um, in relation to policy, I mean, we are facing a number of interconnected emergencies. Um, COVID, obviously the pandemic, um, but coupled with climate emergency and, um, you know, things are really uh, an urgent um, and uh, pressing needs for change. These crises are affecting people who already face uh, racial, social and economic inequalities, adding to the unstable future that they already face. So I believe that we need a radical, sustainable and long term vision for a new future um, and a move away from our dependency on fossil fuel. Unfortunately, as we know, our government does not seem to have a long term vision and seems particularly reactionary. And whilst um, COVID has proved that new policies can be implemented very quickly and ones that actually can help people such as the furlough scheme which we know will be coming to an end soon and also we've seen with Sadiq Khan and his London street space program um, which has a uh, focus on developing walking and cycling schemes within London um, but these uh, none of these schemes seem to address a problem in the long term in comparison Green Party has policies which address these issues providing a bold vision for 
social and economic and environmental transformation, such as the Green New Deal, which would um, move funds towards green technology, infrastructure, social problems, and create many new jobs, which would move to a carbon neutral economy. Um, the universal basic income uh, policy, which would protect everyone, uh, would be uh, something that would be brilliant protecting people and ensure that they have an income if they lose their job and um, also making sure that there is a fully funded public healthcare system that everyone can access. Um, if elected as the Brenton Harrow GLA candidate I would make sure that green policies are clearly communicated as I think more need to know about them. Um, related to my practical skills, I believe that um, I have a really clear understanding of the electoral process and what involves in standing as the candidate and running a successful campaign. The May 2021 elections, I think, are a fantastic opportunity to gain as many green votes as possible. Um, Londoners can vote three times, so. Uh, you know, triple the opportunity to vote for a Green Party. Um, I think I'm organised, um, I'm a good listener and responsive to new ideas and new ways of doing things. Um, through helping organise local party meetings, leafleting, stalls and also helping run the um, party social media accounts online, I think I've got a good understanding of how to engage people and the messaging needed plus frequency. And I would commit fully to the role of the green can uh, being the green candidate, working hard to get as many green votes at the elections in May 2021 20, as possible. Thank you. Uh, I'm Peter Georgiadis, uh, and I wish to uh, be selected as the candidate for the GLA elections. I've been a Brent resident for over 45 years and a teacher for 33 years. I went to Rowe Green Primary School and our local comprehensive Kingsbury High School. Following a BSc in Economics, Sociology and Statistics, I achieved a Master's in Peace Studies at Bradford University. When I moved back to Kingsbury, I was involved in local politics, championing green issues through the Vegetarian Society, Middlesex Animal Rights Group and then the Labour Party. I've been a Green Party member for the past two years and I believe that I'm legally qualified with the right abilities and personal attributes to stand as your candidate for the GLA elections. I now have the time to pursue my passion and achieve my aim of transforming the way society lives. I've just retired from being an assistant head teacher at Claremont High School, and I plan to use my time to canvas Brent and Harrow constituencies and find out what the local issues are and how these can be solved from a green perspective. In my first six months, I intend to knock on doors, talk and listen to people and form a relationship so that residents are able to relate to me, build trust and feel that I am able to represent them. I have long conversation with friends in the Derbyshire Green Party and they very recently got their first councillor elected. It is very important to take up local issues and carry out a 60 second survey. A 60 second survey enabled them to find out information about the issues that residents are worried about, how they previously voted and which green issues are important to them. Furthermore, the survey enabled them to find out what their grievances are with the other parties and build a trust relationship with them. As an assistant head teacher and political campaigner, I'm a team player who can stick to agreed strategies and work well with others to get elected. The teams that I have led have all been successful in getting results and achieving their goals. I led a campaign to introduce Meat Free Mondays at Claremont School and it has become one of the most popular days. I teach economics, business studies and and I have very good communication skills on a one-to-one -one basis in small groups and to large audiences. I've been very involved over the past few years and in particular when my four children were growing up in local groups and organisations. I am known as a successful teacher in Brent at both Preston Manor and Claremont High School and other boroughs where I've worked. I was the school governor and chair of the personnel committee for eight years. 
on the first Kingsbury Scouts Committee for five years, on the Kingsbury Greek School Committee for five years, and football manager for both girls and boys teams at Princess Park and Forest United for a number of years, and these are both local teams. I have masses of energy and tirelessly work for a good cause, and I want to make a difference. During lockdown, I volunteered at St Luke's Hospice and helped the fundraising department with data input. I have a proven record in having the ability to listen and help local residents find solutions. When I stood for council in Row Green Ward, I led a campaign for the residents of Row Green Village to get a Pelican Crossing in Stag Lane, to preserve the village as a preservation area and to improve the membership of the local Labour Party. We reduced a Conservative 1,000 majority to 17 from sheer hard work and gaining residents' trust. Teaching is a difficult occupation and requires the ability to listen and act on the concerns of others. I have to be well organised and at ease with people to manage the job that I have enjoyed doing over the past 33 years. I handled many issues at senior management level to efficiently make sure that things got done. In my job as the school business manager and line manager to support staff, I was able to resolve and cope with conflict, public criticism and be resilient, in some cases defending unpopular views and decisions. I have had the privilege of having an international perspective on green issues because I was offered a teaching post in Cyprus and taught there for seven years. Wilson Cyprus, we formed the Cyprus Vegetarian Society and I was one of the founding members of the Cyprus Ecological and Environmental Movement, which became the Cyprus Green Party. I was selected to stand in the Lana constituency and arranged a three month sabbatical from work to campaign for the Green Party. I managed to put our policies forward when I appeared on television and answered questions from listeners on a local radio station in Larnaca. Papers wrote articles and we were interviewed because it was a new movement and a novelty for, us, for Cypriot politics. We particularly targeted a district in the Nicosia constituency because we identified that we had a good chance of winning a seat in that district for the Green Party. We won the seat for the first time of asking and had our first elected Green MP in the Cypriot Parliament. Our win made a big difference. Our membership swelled and our Green vision was embraced by the media and the population. The main political parties rushed to include Green policies in their manifestos. I stood in a less winnable constitu constituency of Larnaca and managed to get 1.8% of the vote. We highlighted a number of priority issues. The most pressing were the refineries located on the coast road of Decalia and being situated in a, in a residential area, they were very dangerous and linked, yeah. linked to causing high cancer rates. Following on from the elections, the refineries were dismantled. We also campaigned for all new housing to have solar panel powered hot water installed, hot water tanks installed. There was little protection for wild animals and birds before the Green Party's massive achievement and less legislation was passed to safeguard animals and for hunting only to be allowed through strict licensing system. Having returned back to the UK, raising a family and a career in teaching, politics had to take a back seat. I now have the time and space to pursue my vision for a green revolution. There are so many pressing issues in the boroughs and in particular London. Green spaces must be preserved. Brownfield sites used for local businesses and allotments. I grow a lot of my own organic vegetables on my allotment. I strongly believe that small is beautiful and local produce must be encouraged to help the local economy and to curtail pollution. There are long waiting lists for allotments and it is the duty of every authority to make sure that the demand is met. When the country gets back to work, we need them to carry on cycling and to be joined by millions more. With public transport capacity reduced, the roads in our largest cities 
in particular may not be able to cope without it. A coordinated London strategy for cycle lanes and pedestrianisation needs to be put in place to enable self-cycling. There are so many instances where the cycle lanes just stop and then its continuation reappears somewhere else. It is not enough to simply take parts of the road and narrow the lanes because this is hazard and disjointed. In some cases, it's dangerous. We also know that in the new world, pedestrians will need more space. Indications are that there is a significant link between COVID-19 recovery and fitness. Active travel can help us become more resilient. One that minute left. Towns, left. Sorry? One minute left. Okay. That is why towns and cities in the UK and around the world are making or proposing radical changes to their roads to accommodate active travel. We will need to send newsletters as many homes in Brent and Harrow deliver the 60 second survey and in particular focus on areas where the Green Party already has a decent profile. Our efforts will then support those local parties to raise green profile to let people elected in future council and parliamentary elections. It is important to ca start campaigning early and anything that we do before Christmas, I believe by us, will count double. I okay, plan to get issues. I'm the best candidate and most likely to be elected. Uh, I have lived in Brent for most okay. of my life. And is that your time? <laughs> and I'll mute you now. <laughs> I'm trying to unmute you, won't do it. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, you're right. Unmuted. Okay, you're fine. Um, right, so it's time for some questions. Um, I did ask people to send questions in by email if they couldn't make it, and I've got one. So if we start with that one. Um, and this is, uh, what are your thoughts or opinions on the options members have for Green Party leaders in the vote this month? Shall I repeat that? What are your thoughts or opinions on the options members have for Green Party leaders in the vote that's taking place this month? Do you want me to answer that Either first? Either of you, who'd like to go first? I'll let Emma answer it first. Are you ready, Emma? Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I joined the London Green Party hustings debate about a week ago, um, which I found useful. Um, I, I um, know Shara Ali and I, I liked what he said about um, the Green Party um, not being bold enough in their vision um, around the environment. I think that um, as he was talking about, we maybe have been a bit timid in our messaging around that area. And I think that is a preeminent issue of our time is, you know, climate emergency, which we're in. So I fully um, agree that we should um, really have that as our number one priority and push much harder because Extinction Rebellion have been very bold and almost taken the ground, even though they're a, you know, they're a campaigning group rather than an uh, electoral party. Um, but I feel like we should be much stronger in that area. So I um, I support him in that area. Okay. Um, the okay. deputy, do you want me to talk about deputy? Well, go on, deputy. Well? Yeah, um, uh, I, I can't remember his first name. Is it Pashby? Um, Tom Pashby. Tom Pashby, yeah. He is the first non-binary candidate um, standing in that role ever for a national party. Um, and so he will bring a new... Uh, vision uh, to the party. I think it would be good to have some new blood standing. I think, you know, they've obviously Sean Berry and Jonathan Bartley and also Amelia Womack have done a good job, but I think we need new leaders coming forward. So I'm all for new people taking the roles. Okay. Uh, Peter? Um, I, I, oh, you're it's, breaking it's up a bit. It's a matter of opinion and personal. Uh, and I don't really want to reveal who I would vote for in the leadership campaign. All I know is that the Green Party and those people that are leading the Green Party have done a tremendous job uh, and they brought us forward so much and they've highlighted so many of, so many of the issues. 
um, who we vote for, uh, for leadership and, and, and deputy leadership, or whether we want co-leadership, it's, I think it's up to the, up to the individual concerned. Um, and that, that's something very personal. Okay, thank you. Questions for anybody else? If you uh, probably just put your hand up, except for Brian and Nick, uh, if you can indicate if you're asking the question. Anybody? Questions for the candidates? Yes, Sudi. Yeah, uh, one of the things I found is obviously working in Harrow is how we engage with those people that have not contemplated voting green before. So I'd like to know how both of you guys would try and do something maybe a bit different to engage with the ones that are just potentially on the fence. Maybe we could persuade to come across. How would you actually convince them to vote green as opposed to what they've been voting in the past and not thinking of us all as, you know, just this, this small little band in the corner? Okay, uh, I'll reverse it. So Peter first. Yeah. I, th I think Kim was very very correct in her campaigns against um, planning you know, on green sites, planning on uh, building uh, large uh, developments. Um, I know quite a number of people that were at the meeting, the council meeting where um, they stopped, where they stopped um, developments uh, at the council meeting and uh, this, this person I know very well, she spoke at, the, at that meeting uh, we need to be part of the process of stopping developments and we need to be part of the process of persuading and being part of local residents um, having a, a, and believing in, in, in a, a greener Harrow and a greener Brent. That the infrastructure in both these constituencies uh, is, has gone to pot. Um, it's gone to pot because They've allowed so many developments, so many uh, flats, apartments, um, without without any any um, consideration for the congestion and the the traffic um, uh, and the air pollution um, that that's going to that's going to cause. Schools have really suffered. The NHS has really suffered because of what, what what's happened. And I think we need, as a Green Party, to highlight that it's because of the local authorities and the uh, main parties who have passed that because of their greed uh, and um, because they want the money from uh, council tax, uh, they've allowed that to happen. And we need to side with, with local people to stop all of that. OK, thank you. Uh, Emma? Um, I see that, you know, people don't see environmental issues as their primary concern when you're, you know, you've lost your job and or you've known someone who's died from COVID. I guess the your preeminent uh, uh, issues are not the climate, which seems really far away, even though it's not. And I, I, even though I don't think you can separate climate and so, social justice, I do think they're interesting intricately intertwined um, but communicating as you say with um, other people and um, especially people who don't see green issues as a primary issue you need to uh, maybe come at things from a different angle so um, I think things like making sure that there are public services still available to people as they have increasingly been cut. Um, Brent and Harrow are well I know Brent's the most ethnically diverse borough in the country and Harrow is the most re religiously diverse. Um, so um, we need to make sure that their views are being represented and um, make sure that people um, in the council are representing their views, um, that they have um, are listened to and the community is consulted of our issues and that they actually have um, their voices um, amplified um, so that uh, any of their concerns are addressed. Okay, thank you. I mean, one thing to point out to both of you is that the new um, legislation coming from the government is going to remove a lot of local control over new buildings and regeneration and so on. Uh, so that's, that's going to be a really difficult one in the future. Any other questions? Pete? Yeah, um, 
Peter. In view of the, in view of the fact, oh, am I muted? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Peter, yeah. Peter. In, in, view, in view of the fact that, um, that most economists predict that it, we are now entering a, quite a severe recession, um, I notice that both of you have said you're opposed to um, development projects with quite good reasons, in my opinion. But how would you answer the criticism? that what you're doing is actually taking jobs away and what other jobs could you provide instead of those that might be involved in development projects? Okay. Or would you offer to provide? You can't provide jobs immediately, I don't think. Yes, e Emma, reverse it again. Um, well, the Green Party's um, Green New Deal, especially I think the 2019 um, manifesto it addressed, it addressed how we need to move away from a fossil fuel based um, economy to a carbon uh, neutral economy. And that would be through creating um, carbon neutral jobs. So ones that are dealing with, you know, creating a sustainable society, focusing on renewable energies. Um, so it needs to, there needs to be a whole new job market um, and view for new jobs created that will um, meet that vision rather than focusing on you know the build 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 mantra and um, focusing on what we already have you know there's so much potential out there for um, new ideas and new jobs so I would say that it needs to be a radical transformation of the type of work that is out there. Okay uh, Peter? Yeah I'm, I'm an economist uh, the studies teacher, uh, I'm aware that um, economies and local um, areas are dependent on local businesses. How many local businesses are going to collapse because of what's happened, because of lockdown, etc.? All these local businesses are not construction based businesses. A lot of the local businesses are hairdressers, a lot of the local businesses are restaurants, a lot pubs etc uh, etc et service industry uh, is is paramount so you don't need to depend on um on construction you don't need to de depend on development we have enough development uh in 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 the two constituencies what we need to do is we need to identify areas where jobs can be created supported by local authorities local government and and, uh, and, and the government as a whole, national government, so that we can move forward and not have mass unemployment. This income that we, we, we propose, where if you're unemployed, you get a certain, amount of, a certain amount of income, that will help, that will be a safety net. And I think that's paramount to what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Um... Zoom is telling me there's only six minutes left, so they've counted it from very early on. Hello, <laughs> hello, Martin. Who's that? Can you hear me? Yes, Brian. Brian. You got a question? <coughs> Brian, have you got a question? Brian. Hello, Martin. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Would you like to give your question? I'm afraid you're not coming through very loud, if you can hear me. I'll just lob in a question. Um, how do we persuade ordinary people that unless they change their standard of living, the planet is doomed? And how would we suggest that they accept and vote for a party which reduces which part of their standard of living is the most dangerous? Is it meat eating? Is it car ownership? Is it holidays abroad? Which activity which we are currently wedded to, do we need to prioritise to enable us to end up living on a sustainable planet? Okay, thank you. Um, it's uh, Peter first, I think. Lockdown has taught us that actually we can cut down on so much that we do. Uh, lockdown has taught us that we don't actually need our cars, if at all. Lockdown has taught us that we can walk from A to B. Um, we do not need to be extravagant. We do not need to buy uh, all these material goods. We do not need to all these commodities. We have cut down and so many people actually appreciate um, what has happened 
in terms of they've had to cut down, they've lived a different lifestyle, a much quieter, less stressful um, lifestyle, um, that people are actually realizing that a green option is viable. A different way of life is viable. A different style of life is viable. I went to the shops during lockdown to try and find seeds to tomato seeds, cucumber seeds, etc. They'd all run out. I couldn't find any compost. It all ran out. Why did it run out? Because people have a different started a different lifestyle. They started growing things in their gardens. They started growing things in their allotments. They worked together. There was community spirit. Okay, can I stop you there because we're running out of time just to give Emma a chance. This is, what, this is, this is a, way, a different way of life. Yeah. Emma? Um, I, again, I agree with Peter in that, you know, the COVID crisis has really revealed to people that you do not need to live an extravagant life and be constant, constantly engaging in entertainment and pleasure and consuming things. It doesn't bring happiness. And I think we need to move away from a consumerist based society. Um, regarding the three things, the worst things that you can do, flying or eating meat, or I can't remember what the other one was. Um, I mean, I mean, the, from statistics, the worst one you can do is eat meat, which is the, the biggest producer of emissions, but all of them are, are, are bad, aren't they? And so I think getting people to change their ways is very hard, but I think you need to show by example, really, um, not preach to people because people never respond well to that, but just show that, you know, there's another way and it doesn't bring happiness. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. We're actually going to run out of time any second now. So, Peter, would you have about 30 seconds to round up? Uh, I am just, I've just retired. I have an enormous energy. I can canvas, campaign day and night. Uh, and I really strongly believe that we can actually win a seat in the, on the GLA for Harrow and Brent. And I really okay. feel that I'm the Thank right you. candidate to do that. Emma? Um, I think you should vote for me because I will be the first ever candidate to take on this role from the Harrow side of our joint constituency, as all the other five past um, candidates have been from Brent. Plus, I would be the first female Green Party candidate to stand in this role since the very first GLA elections in 2000. So I would consequently bring a different perspective, new ideas and focus to the role. I can see. Do you want me to say more? <laughs> um, and I would stand for um, working, a uh, normal working person who lives in the constituency. Um, I believe in fairness, inclusivity, and everyone having a voice. And I would listen to the needs of Brent and Harrow constituencies, working to understand what it is. Okay, thank you.